Understanding steel, the most common steel types. In this video series, we're going to have two parts. Uh, the first part, we're going to be looking at carbon steels. So there are basically three types of steels when it comes to product manufacture. Carbon steel, alloy steel, and stainless steel. In this first part, we're going to be concentrating on carbon steel and alloy steel. We're going to be covering stainless steel in part two of this series. So each of these types of steel has a variety of grades that comprise of different amounts of iron and carbon, the basic elements of steel, and additional alloys. When selecting the right steel for your job, there are several factors that you need to consider. Hardness, which is the capacity to resist abrasion, but also difficult in being cut or drilled. A strength, which is the amount of force necessary to deform the metal. Toughness, the ability to resist to stress. In other words, not to break. We've got malleability, the ability of the metal to deform. And weldability, which is the ability to be welded. It's a function of melting point, heat conduction, etc. So like I said, on the right hand side here, we're going to be focusing on the top two steels, carbon steel and alloy steel. So let's have a look at carbon steel. So carbon steel, which is an alloy of steel and carbon, gets corroded, but it is hard. The more carbon content, the harder the steel. Low carbon steel is strong and tough and can be case hardened if needed. High carbon steel can be heat treated to make it a lot harder. However, in this condition, it tends to be more brittle and more difficult to work with. So common applications for carbon steel. There are tubes, plates, bolts, signs, furniture, fencing, and many other common metal parts are made in low carbon steel. Professional kitchen knives, cutting tools and CNC machines, drill bits, saws, Masonry nails are all made of high carbon steel. The high hardness gives blades and cutting tools a sharp edge that lasts. However, with this hardness comes brittleness, which means products tend to break easier. The disadvantage of high carbon steel is that it is more expensive and harder to machine than alloys with less carbon. It is appropriate when rust is not a concern and when the product doesn't need to withstand tensile strength. It doesn't really bend and it breaks more easily, in other words. So let's have a look at alloy steels. So alloy steels, steels that has additional chemical elements added to improve certain properties. Some of the most common alloying elements are manganese, nickel, chromium, molybdenum, vandenum, silicone, and boron. The improved properties that alloy steel have over carbon steel are better strength, hardness, toughness, wear resistance, corrosion resistance, and hardenability. Common applications for alloy steels. Construction and architecture where strength, toughness, and corrosion resistance are a prerequisite for the material. Also, jewelry, Household items, cutlery, cookware are all manufactured from alloy steel. So alloy steels can be split into two categories, low alloy steels and high alloy steels. Low alloy steels have less than 8% total alloying elements in the composition. These steels have better hardness and resistance to wear over carbon steel, but tend to have less tensile strength. The high alloy steels have more than 8% alloying elements and have better properties than those of low alloying steels. So don't forget to check out our other videos on this channel. And like I said, we're going to have part two in this series coming up next. If you have any issues or need to work in China and you need some help, don't forget to contact us and there's a link below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell symbol below because that will be a reminder for when we add new content. So my name is Paul Adams from Soft East and thanks for listening.